Today I'm gonna to show you guys the easiest way to make a breakfast burrito, and first thing you're gonna do is put some eggs in a pan with butter. Uh-oh, looks like the heat may be a little high. And once we get the eggs in here, we're just gonna scramble them up a little, add some salt and pepper, Love your page. Hey, thank you, Ashley. What's up, Nick's Nana? Add a little bit of salt. Hi from Eugene. What's up, Ruth? A little bit of pepper. And we're also gonna use, you can do shredded cheese. I'm a fan of American cheese, especially for like anything egg related or burger related. I know that there are some weird ingredients in here, but it's mostly just cheese, if you actually look at the ingredients. So, I'm not too worried about. All right, so we've gotten our eggs. We're gonna add the cheese. And then, I'm gonna review this bacon in a bag so apparently you buy this bacon, and yes, Sophia and Anna are home. They, I picked them up this morning. So I'm gonna review this bacon in a bag. I have not tried it yet. It's supposed to get crispy. Yeah. All right, so we've got the eggs. I'm gonna add the cheese. We're gonna go with two slices. And actually, we'll add some of the bacon. So let's open it up. All right, let's see if it's actually crispy. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. It has a weird flavor. Like, there is a weirdness to the taste. It has like an earthy taste. I don't know. But it's pretty good. It's crunchy. All right, so we added the cheese. Now we have this low carb tortilla and we're just gonna like press it together. Get the cheese under it. Wait, there's no cottage cheese in the scramble. The reason it looked like that is because I, I scrambled it in the pan. If you really want truly scrambled eggs, you would have, you know, whisk them before you add them to the pan. Thank you, Sarah Lynn. What's a good low carb tortilla? This is extreme wellness. Some people like Mission. I think Mission tastes the best compared to all of the compared to all of them, but I like the Extreme Wellness. Um, there's also the La Banderita. And I'll show you guys how I flip it. I don't know if it's sticking very well. Maybe that's why you shouldn't use American cheese because it's too melty, maybe it isn't sticky enough, but we'll find out. So this is how I flip it. You can try to be like, to, to do like a real chef style flip, but this is what I do. I put a plate on top and then I go boom. Try adding cottage cheese instead of American, the eggs come out so creamy. So cottage cheese is a great addition. Oh, it worked. Um, if you're doing the Starbucks like egg bites, I think the cottage cheese is great. All right, we're gonna put it back in, and then we're just gonna roll it up when it's done. So whenever I recreate the Starbucks egg bites, I put cottage cheese in the mix, and then I blend it, and you get like a very fluffy texture when they come out. But I don't know how it would be in this recipe. Hey, I got this, Karen. Yeah, you can also put the low carb tortilla in the air fryer and it gets very crispy. And if you want it to get super crispy, like and yummy, you can spray it with some avocado oil. 
I'm making your blueberry loaf cake tonight. Oh, Lux, let me know how it turns out. Maybe the earthy taste of the bacon is from whatever it sets on in the bag. Yeah, it was like a... I don't know. I'm gonna try and figure out what that flavor was. I don't know if I would say earthy now that I think back on it. It's just like a... I mean, you can't deny that it's crispy. It's just like a unique, different... Can I try it? Yeah, we can let Anna try it. Sophia does not like bacon. Every time we've tried to give it to her, she like, is not into it, right? Yeah. Was it just that one day or have we tried since then? I don't think we've tried it. I don't know what we had that one time. Sophia's just sitting by herself in the corner of the couch. It has like hair on it. Hair? Yeah, look. Anna says it has hair on it. I don't think it came like that in the bag. It must be... No, come here, look at it. You mean like how like raspberries have hair? You mean it's fuzzy? Hair. She says it has piggy hair. Guys, it does not it's have okay. hair. Okay, I still like the ones from uh, Costco much better. It, there's not hair on it. It's like... I don't think it's hair. I don't know what it is, but... It's just like a little piece that's poking up. It's probably just like a piece of the bacon. But you like the Costco kind better? Yeah, for sure. Well, the Costco, this is a different kind. So the Costco kind is fully cooked. So when you get the fully cooked bacon, um, it wasn't hair or fur. It's just like part of the bacon. But anyway, um, when you get the fully cooked, you, it's fully cooked, so you just microwave it for 30 seconds. This was not fully cooked, so when you put it in the microwave, you do three minutes. Overall, I would give it like a... Because I'm so lazy and I truly hate nothing more than freaking cooking raw meat because you have to constantly wash your hands, I find that to be the most... I love meat, I eat meat all day, every day meat is amazing for you but um i hate raw meat with a passion because you have to constantly go back and forth washing your hands like if i were to open some bacon you know and i put it on the plate i have to wash my hands and then how do i sand it how do i like get it back into the fridge i have to now get a ziploc bag and you could do the hack where you cut it with scissors but now you have to sanitize your scissors i find that to be so annoying so the, the flavor of this, I would give like a five out of 10, but because it's crispy and because I'm not touching any raw meat, I would give it like a seven and a half out of 10. I, I would give the Costco fully cooked bacon like a nine out of 10. That's my favorite. All right, so now what you do with this wrap, you just roll it up like this. I used to make these for Anna Oh no, it's too hot to roll. So I used to make these for Anna all the time when she was pregnant. She had like a chicken aversion and we were trying to get her protein in. So I would make her these wraps every morning. I need two of these. And there it is, a little breakfast burrito. I don't know what this is, but... Mm. And now we just cut it in half. I'll use a Sarah Ted knife. I'm sure the fully cooked bacon at Sam's is the same as the one at Costco. And there you go, a super easy breakfast burrito. It takes like two minutes. Oh my God, I'm burning. Mm. And we'll put some hot sauce on here. 
And we gotta take a picture. Did you start keto for weight loss? I did, when I started keto, I'd been overweight basically my whole life. I weighed 240 pounds. Eventually I got down to 160. And then I started lifting weights and it took me two years to go from 240 to 160. And then I started lifting weights and got up to around 170. And then we had Sophia and I got up to like 190. And then now I'm like consistently around 175 and I really like where I'm at right now. And just for reference, I'm like 5'11 when I talk about my weight. All right, guys, we're gonna put some Valentina on here. The best hot sauce. I've been on keto for seven years. I started in 2016. And we're just gonna put the Valentina like this for the picture, just like a dot up on this little part. Yum, this looks great. Okay. All right, one more picture. All right, that is a fine picture. It's not amazing, but whatevs. Have you done cheese taco shells? That's another one that's really easy to make and super yummy. Yeah, I like cheese taco shells. Do you do regular exercise or gym? You look like one of those healthy people that never had weight issues. So I was overweight my whole life. I have a before picture in my keto Q&A number one story highlight, I think. Um, I was overweight my whole life. When I was 20, I started keto. And like I said, it took me two years to lose the 80 pounds. And it was only then that I started exercising. I was always the most unfit, unathletic person in the world, like I was not someone who always had, um, who was always in shape. To this day, if you throw a ball at me, there's a 99% chance I'm gonna drop it. I don't know many people more uncoordinated or like unathletic than me. I just found, and it's so mind blowing to me that I can exercise because I always thought that kind of disqualified me from ever getting in shape, but it's totally not true at all. I lift weights like three, four days a week. I go running all the time. There was a phase where I didn't start exercising until after I got to my goal weight, but I did go through a phase where I was like truly addicted to running. I could run for like 10 miles at a time. So it's just one of those things where I was always out of shape. I was always overweight. Keto kind of saved me. And then after I got to my goal weight, I started exercising. And then my body composition started to get better because when I went from 240 to 160, I was just kind of like skinny with like a little bit of chub. And then I started lifting weights and now I, I like, like how my body looks better this way. All right, let's try this burrito. Mmm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So good. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, Marianne, I'm not, so don't take what exercise I did as what you should do. I think Lifting weights is probably the best thing to do for anyone who's trying to lose weight, but it's also the most difficult for people to get started with because they just, it's easy to go watch a YouTube high intensity exercise video and do it or go on the elliptical or go jogging. It's not that it's easy, but it's simple. Like you can't really do it wrong. 
But a lot of people are scared to lift weights because they're worried they'll do it wrong. How are you gonna know, like, am I lifting enough weight? Are my workouts hard enough? It's a lot more difficult to get into lifting weights, but that is the one you're gonna see the biggest returns on for weight loss because it's not about the calories you burn in the gym with lifting weights. It's about putting some lean mass on, raising your metabolic rate, and being able to eat more food without getting fat. So that is why lifting weights is so appealing to overweight people and like why it's probably the best thing to do because it raises your metabolism by putting some lean mass on your body. And just go down the journey of figuring it out. You know, watch YouTube videos, watch TikToks, start with what you're comfortable with. Go to the gym, use the machines. That is like the best thing to do. But the true best thing to do that's more important than anything I just said is whatever you're willing to stick to. And if that means going for long walks, if that means going on the elliptical and watching your favorite TV show, just whatever the heck you're going to show up and do for three days a week, that is the most important one to do because no diet, no exercise plan, nothing in this world will work unless you can actually stick to it. Hmm. Your salmon bites and chili lime seasoning are now in my life like four times a week. I love it, Andrea. That's one of the easiest recipes ever. I usually, we probably eat salmon a few times a week for sure. Karen says ketosis corrected her diabetes and hypertension 100%. That is why I get on here and make videos for stories like that. That's what this is all about, guys. So many people, pre-diabetes, type two diabetes, you name it. And we're, keto isn't the only way to reverse those things because even on a higher carb diet, if you can actually stick to a calorie deficit, you really can overcome things like type two diabetes. But a lot of people just find it easier to get to their goal through keto because when your options are basically fat, protein, and vegetables, it's much easier to not overeat, which is where all those issues come from. It's a lot easier to overeat if I can have pasta, and then I'm like, all right, well, like just the idea of doing a, a high carb diet and trying to not gain weight would just be so hard to me because french fries, pasta, like all of the carbs just taste good to me. And if I could eat carbs and not make them taste good, sure, that might work. But I, I just don't think that would be sustainable. Whereas things like this are so good to me and they're so satiating because they're high in protein. And that's really the key. But all right, guys, I'm going to get off here. I love you. Actually, let's let Sophia say hi before I get off. She was in Florida all weekend. Had fresh cod and bacon for dinner today. I love it, Caroline. Her eye is a little gunky. Hi, Sophia. Say hi. Oh, are you looking at the burrito? Say hi, Sophia. Look, it's you. It's you. Mm. What do you think of the burrito? Do you want to try the burrito? Yummy, yummy. Okay. We can't have any burrito. There might be hot sauce on it. All right, let's go back to mommy, Sophia. Mm. Say bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> all right, you guys, I'm gonna get off here. Thank you for all of the nice words about Sophia. I love you guys, I believe in you. I'll see you tomorrow.
And if you got the book, Carefree Keto, and you haven't left a review on Amazon, go to Amazon, leave a review. I appreciate those so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.